to see Caught in a landslide No escape from reality Alright, so as I'm reading this new Spider-Man comic, it's pretty apparent that Stegman had a lot to do with this book. Um, he may have not have had as much to do with it as he did in uh, Venom Incorporated Alpha, which was really his book with uh, Slot just consulting on it. But in this book, it is apparent that Stegman had something to do with it, but there's slightly more cringe so I do think that Slot was probably involved in this book more since it is his book for the time being. And uh, I don't know, like, I like this story, but this issue was not as good as the other issue. It does have its, have its peaks in it just because of some of the characters that are in it. But you can tell that Slot had more to do with it, so it's slightly more cringe. Uh, no amount of Alex Ross covers can save Spider-Man at this point. But so so let's check out the cover here. It's Alex Ross cover. You know, I like Alex Ross, but they overuse him. And people people have told me before they're like, "Why are you mad that he's on all the covers? He's good." And that gets him work and everything. I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's cool. It gets him work." And but it's the same thing is like if you see, let's say that you like Ferraris. Okay, you say you like Ferraris. And then let's say that you go to work and uh, everybody starts buying Ferraris, okay? And then you buy a Ferrari. And then now everybody's got Ferraris and you see them every day. Are you going to like them as much as you used to like them? No, you're not. It's going to be something you see all the time and it loses its uh, its majest majestic looks. It loses its, I don't know, it's just not as cool anymore. So anyway, we get this cover and then we get to the title page and it says Dan Slott and Mike Costa. Uh, it's funny because it says Dan Slott and Mike Costa story. Dan Slott writer. And then it has Ryan Stegman as the artist. Or Mike Costa was the writer. I'm sorry. I kept saying Stegman. But Stegman's the artist for, for Venom. Costa. It's pretty apparent that Costa has something to do with the writing on this on these books. But uh, so anyway, let's go on the inside here and... We start off from the last issue uh, where Flash Thompson had just become anti-Venom. And you can already tell from the last book to this book, this book is more of a mess. Because you start out this first page and you're just like, those, are, those boxes are too small. Um, the words are too small. And then you get this cuts, you get this big scene here where he's punching Venom. And it's okay, but... And here's the deal: Does is is Spider-Man just like really stupid, or does he just not know what's going on? Because this whole thing is that he thinks Venom is bad. And my deal is: Have you not? Where have you been for the last two years, or really more than that? Because you know, I think Agent Venom was like 2011, and um, so have you not heard any stories from anybody about? Uh, Agent Venom, how good he was, and how the new Venom is like an anti-hero now. Like, you haven't heard any of that. So, immediately, he wants to to knock Venom out. And he knows that Agent Venom is is acting weird here because he grabs Venom in a chokehold and just starts, like, being very aggressive with him. Now, to me, I would notice right off the bat that the symbiote is controlling Flash, and he's not acting right. But instead... He, t he double teams Venom with anti-Venom, which is just very uncharacteristic. And uh, so then Venom's trying to, or anti-Venom shows his true colors, and he's trying to steal the symbiote from from uh, Eddie. And he grabs it from him, and then, you know, he's burning the, ven the Venom because he's anti-Venom, and it's anti-everything Venom in an instant. Even when he touches it, it hurts it. And uh, we know that from when Eddie Brock was anti-Venom. And let's talk about something for a minute. Eddie Brock is like a revolving door for symbiotes lately in Marvel. They can't, they can't figure out what they want to do with him. They know that he's an integral part to the character of the, of the, of the books, but then they can't decide what to do with him. He was Venom, okay, for the longest time. And then you had Flash Thompson be Venom. And then he was uh, Toxin for a while. And he was anti-Venom. 
and then now he's back Venom and it's just like they can't decide what to do with him but so then he steals the symbiote he, he steals a container from the uh, uh, doctor and just basically runs off with it and and Spider-Man, you know, Eddie Brock's trying to get the symbiote back, and Spider-Man just wraps him up with a spider web and says, you just sit there and think about what you've done. He hasn't done anything. He had his symbiote, and Flash tried to steal it from him. What has he done? But, uh, so then, he Flash runs off of the symbiote, and Spider-Man says, hey, you know, if you're going to take it, you might as well take it somewhere where we can, you know, keep an eye on it. So he says, hey, I've got an idea, just follow me. And so they leave, and then we cut to the Black Cat's Club. And I feel really bad for Black Cat because they have done this thing now where she's a crime boss. She's took over Kingpin's territory. But they keep using her as a punching bag in these stories. You know, she got shot by, by uh, Diamondback and the Defenders and got totally punked. And then in this one, she's about to get punked again. So we have Hammerhead paying his tolls to the five families which is uh, Black Cat and other people and so then the, the side of the wall and the door busts open and somebody comes in and uh, they say uh, you know you, you really need to get guards at the door and they said oh oh never mind because we're here now and it walks in and you know it's a looter and a couple other people and she goes oh it's a looter she goes you know what kind of C class villains gonna come in here and bother me and then that's when Lee Price walks in and she goes, wow, even you know, even worse. But here's my thing. They can't consistently draw a black cat because in this page right here, she looks really good uh, face-wise. And uh, then in like a couple pages ago, they had her with a surprise face with a different face features when she was supposed to have like a serious face. So they, they're, they're kind of inconsistent there. But Stegman's usually pretty good, so I'll let it slide. Uh, so basically, she's uh, insulting Lee Price because she doesn't know, you know, about his new ulterior motives. My thing is, you don't see these guys with symbiotes on their heads. I mean, that's pretty easy to notice. So then, at that point, her guys attack the symbiote guys. The I guess I'll call them symbi bros. The symbi bros. Uh, they're attacking each other. So then we cut back, and uh, Spider-Man has taken Anti Venom to. Uh, Mockingbird's or yeah Mockingbird's apartment and listen to his excuse he says uh, this is Bobby Morris's apartment Peter Parker's girlfriend this is where Pete's staying and he said and why would you take me here and he says because um, you know that Pete and I know each other if I took you to my place you might figure out my secret identity wait what he goes just roll with it the important thing is that Pete's got all kinds of sciency equipment. He's got all kinds of sciency equipment. You know, because people say that. Oh my God. A, a smart person does not say sciency. But my thing is, he takes Flash Thompson to Peter Parker's girlfriend's apartment. That is a huge overstep of boundaries right there. Now, I know that Peter Parker is Spider Man, but if he's trying to show Flash that he's not. Peter Parker that is the stupidest thing I've ever seen I mean that's something that a child would think about why would you not take him anywhere but there you could have went to an abandoned warehouse or something I mean it's just so stupid and you got to take him to and then they make this uh, this snide remark because you know they're trying to figure out what to do with the symbiote uh, spider-man wants to destroy it uh, flash is not having it flash all of a sudden has this weird they've changed Flash's um, personality and I don't really like it because they've made him like Eddie Brock you know they made this they're making this weird thing where they're making him fall in love with the symbiote and like they have to be a part of it and, and Flash was never like that he was friends with the symbiote they were friends they I mean he's just like it's, it's, it's these weird faces but we'll get back to the cringy part I want to talk about in a minute we cut back and uh Black Cat is, a, you know, fighting with her gangster guys against Maniac, which is Lee Price, and his Simbi bros. And uh, so, I mean, they're not holding up at all. And then we get this thing with uh, 
Lee Price is wanting, he's trying to capture Gargan. And if you know who Gargan is, he was a scorpion. So when he spits up on Gargan's face, which is supposed to make him another one of his symbi bros, since he had a symbiote in his body, it reactivates all of it and he turns into basically Venom Scorpion. And I thought that was pretty cool. Now the design is okay. It, it's weird, but it's okay. But I thought, hey, that's a pretty cool idea. And then, you know, that's pretty much all where that goes. And then we cut back to Eddie Brock, and he's extremely punked, and he's mad. And so he's going off trying to find the symbiote. And and then we get to this cringy part. This is what I'm going to talk about before. He says, Spider-Man says to Flash, which has Flash in the bathtub, or has Venom in the bathtub, and he's petting him like a pet. Um... He, he tells Flash this. He says, Oh boy, hope that thing doesn't leave a ring in the tub. I don't want Pete's girlfriend to kill him because he totally would. <sighs> Have some testosterone, Pete. My God has some testosterone. But anyway, um, so then pretty much nothing comes of this. And, they, and then Peter says that he has an idea. He needs a, snip, a snippet of the Venom symbiote. He's going to put it in this tracker that Pete had made for some apparent reason. Well, I just don't understand. But So then they're able to put it in there. And basically now it's a, uh, a dragon scouter. Basically now it shows them where the Dragon Balls, I mean the Venom symbiotes are. And uh, that's where they you know, go off on their adventure. So then we get... Uh, a snippet here of uh, Betty Brant, which is uh, Flash's girlfriend. Apparently, she's been helping Pete with her. I mean, this is so it's so confusing of a story. She's hel she helped Pete get a job at the Daily Bugle again, and he didn't show up for work, so she's calling. But Eddie sees her, and I think he's going to kidnap her to try to get the Venom symbiote back. But anyway, uh, so then we cut to a pretty cool scene here where uh, Anti-Venom and Spider-Man are flying through the air and we almost, almost get a cool dialogue here because he, you know, Anti-Venom says it's so great to have my powers back, I'm a hero again and uh, then that's when Spider-Man cuts him off and says, you know, I'm in charge of the jokes here. He says, the Flash Thompson I know, serviceman, Purple Heart recipient, and proud veteran that guy's a re uh, already a hero. And so Flash just kind of looks at him. And then the dragon radar goes off. And he says, oh, um, yeah, you just paying, thank God, because uh, there's that weird bromantic uh, silence. It was awkward, right? You know, oh, yeah. <sighs> there don't have to be these weird situations. Everybody doesn't have to act extremely awkward when they're complimenting another person. I mean, I... They act like Pete talks to nobody. They act like he has no social skills whatsoever. And he does. He talks to people all the time. He's a reporter. Or he's a, 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 a picture photographer for the uh, reporters. I mean, he's all the time involved in these situations. I mean, it just don't... I don't know. I don't know. I'm just over it. But anyway. So they sneak into Black Cat's club because that's where the signal takes them because it's such a strong signal of Venom's there because everybody's a Venom. And when they drop in, they drop in right in the middle of the problems because uh, somebody says, Hey boys, who wants to give me a big old kiss? And it's a Venom uh, controlled black cat with the rest of the gang. And uh, so at that point, they're in trouble because that's a lot of symbiotes to have to fight. And uh, he says, I didn't say this before, but Venoms don't send off my spotty sense. He says, Oh, that's perfect, you know. And then that's when they had this weird thing. Well, she, she was talking about you. No, she was talking about you. And I was like, oh, gosh, it's so cringy, guys. They, they've totally changed these guys' personalities. Like, they don't know how. Flash was awesome in uh, the, Ven the Venom run. He was, a, uh, he was a war veteran that didn't know his place. He was a slight alcoholic. He had problems with his family, keeping a job, keeping his girlfriend. And then when he got the Venom, it helped him take control of his life and be, be a man again. And they just make... They don't know how to write different people. Everybody's got the same personality, and I just don't get it. Now, you can tell that Mike Costa had a little bit to do with this because it's not completely cringeworthy, but it's not nearly as good as Alpha. And that just goes to show you that Slot probably had a lot more to do with this. 
but that's pretty much all I got to say about it. I, you know, I, I would still recommend it if you're trying to read the whole story, but I definitely wouldn't recommend like, I don't know, I wouldn't go buy a physical copy because it's just not worth it. I would just go buy a cheap digital copy because you do want to kind of support Mike Costa, but you also don't care about Dan Slott. Uh, but Ryan Stegman's a pretty good artist, so. But that's all I got to say about it. It's not as good as the other one. I know the story behind Agent Venom. It's probably one of my favorite characters of all time. And uh, they just don't do him justice. But I do like the anti-Venom idea. But of course, like everything that uh, has to do with Dan Slott, it's diluted and it's turned into uh, weird alt-human humor that doesn't make any sense. But that's all I got to say, guys. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Now, like I said before, we're going to be doing a live stream this Thursday at 7 p.m. So make sure you make it to that. It's going to be a special live stream. And we're going to totally talk about super manly stuff. Ha, 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 with comics. But all right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Underground Geek, out.